The collection we have is part of the national collection and the team's role here is to make sure that in 50, 100 years time families can still come in to a museum, see Spitfires, Hurricanes, Messerschmitts or anything else that we've got in our collection. And what we have here is a Vickers Wellington bomber, a very, very rare bomber. Over 11,500 manufactured, two remaining in the UK. What you've got here is all the beautiful pipe work and electrical connections and things like that from the original aeroplane. Just imagine on your modern day aircraft how much is in there nowadays, all these beautiful systems. A little bit of wood on here as well. But the one outstanding feature with the Wellington is it's a construction. And this is what we've got here. Unlike any other airplanes that we fly around in nowadays, this is geodetic. It's basically diamond structure with a lot of building redundancy. So if there's some damage taken here, you have a bigger diamond on the outside. So say these airplanes could take a hell of a lot of damage. We bought it here about six, seven years ago, and the majority of the damage then was to the fabric covering on the outside. Very, very little damage or, or deterioration in the metal structure underneath. We have found a little bit of oxidation on the aluminium here and there. Nothing too drastic, and we just treated that. And what we've got here is the turret. One of the very nice things about my job, um, I do get to meet the veterans. Uh, I met this one gentleman and his story's always stayed with me. He came here with his family and he was telling me he was flying out of North Africa in the Wellington squadrons, 37 operations. He bailed out five times into the Mediterranean. Um, you can see, here we go, this is his little office. So he'd be sat in there. Not much room as you can see. So just to take the story one step further, five, five times he bailed out into the Mediterranean and got picked up five times. On the fifth time though, he was telling me a story which his family hadn't heard before. Um, they, were, they were flying around, got shot up by a 109. You can imagine the air battle, a lot of noise, explosions, whatever going on. And over his headset, he heard a word, abracadabra. And that was their call sign for one thing, out. So he come out of his turret, started getting his chute on so he could go overboard yet again. Um, for whatever reason, he looked back through the turret, directly behind him, he could see the Messerschmitt 109 that had shot his aeroplane down. He was eye to eye with the German pilot. German pilot, give him a salute and let him live. Most of the aircraft we get come straight from the RAF. Um, once something's coming out of service, we normally get asked if we would like one to come in our collection. But over the years, we've had other bits and pieces come in from collectors around the world. We've done some bits of swapping. Don't tend to use too much in the way of currency. Museum currency can be a spitfire for us. We don't have that many left now, actually, to be able to, um, to trade. But that's what's happened in the past. The museum started a very successful apprenticeship scheme in 2005. They identified uh, a skill shortage really, most aeroplanes nowadays are mass produced, um, CNC machines and all this sort of stuff. So we decided that it would be a good idea to start it, get the younger generation and when people like myself retire, there's someone out there with the skills that can come and step into my place. It's just the real basic skills we thought were now out there, um, drilling, filing, riveting, shaping metal and all these sort of skills, uh, forming metal. Um, interestingly, and one very good thing that we get involved with, with the apprentices when they come to us, they really are um, at school just learning metric. So we bring them here and we start talking about eighths and fractions and it's like talking to them in a foreign language. Have you ever heard of an eighth? No. I haven't got a clue. How, what's that in mills? Oh, no, yeah, okay. And so, you know, we have these conversations with them and, and they're quite interesting to see how quick some of them pick it up and learn. And here we have an aircraft showing, fuselage of an aircraft showing all the signs of an air battle and a crash landing. And that's exactly what we've got on this handy page, Hamden. It was one of 32 aircraft that left the Shetland Islands on the night of the 4th of September, 1942. Sadly, at the 32, nine didn't get there. This one shows signs of impact damage from shrapnel, possibly when it hit trees, when it crash landed, but also on the side of the fuselage, you've got 10 bullet holes. When we do work on all these projects, we have to think about the men and it flew in these objects. On that evening, there were five young airmen on board. Pilot declared he was crash landing the aircraft. He could not control it anymore. There was a young airman in the front cockpit here. Sadly, he was killed. Pilot above me, he ended up surviving POW for the rest of the war. Above my head on top of the wing was a technician. He also survived POW for the rest of the war. The back of the aeroplane, suddenly there were two young airmen. Both were killed and shot down by the Messerschmitt 109. 
talking large objects, if I'm talking aeroplanes at both sites, we've ran about 180 just on public display. But then if you start adding in the missiles, engines, and stuff that we got in Stafford, I'm suggesting that the collection that we look after goes in over a thousand. It's just the chance for the public to come meet us, see some of the objects, but also a nice place for them to come and say thank you for what the RAF has done for this country in the last hundred years.